Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Justin Fields clears the air about returning kickoffs. The Pittsburgh Steelers were busy in the first few weeks of the NFL offseason. After a few frustrating seasons with Kenny Pickett at the helm, the Steelers decided that enough was enough and tried to start over at the position. Not only did they get rid of Pickett, but they also added two new quarterbacks, Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Many expect Wilson to be the starter in Week 1, given his career experience and track record, which could leave little early season work for Fields. With this in mind, some people questioned what Fields' role would be on this team, given the fact that he was a starter in Chicago. There was a rumor going around that Fields would start returning kicks for the Steelers, a rumor that he recently tried to dispel. As Fields said in this article from the Post-Gazette, nah, I just think everybody kind of interpreted it wrong. Coach Danny was basically just trying to send a message that no matter who you are, you could be used on special teams. He just used that as an example. In Fields' words, this whole situation was a bit of a misunderstanding. Assuming he's telling the truth, it appears that one of his coaches used him as an example in a practice, which led some to believe that Fields would actually start returning punts and kicks. This would be an unorthodox approach for any team, given the constant need for backup quarterbacks in case a starter gets injured. First call, Kirk Cousins updates health with Falcons opening against Steelers, Ravens star endorses hip drop ban. Wednesday's first call has an injury prognosis for Kirk Cousins in advance of the season opener against the Pittsburgh Steelers. We also give contract details on a trio of big play AFC receivers and a health update on a Baltimore Ravens star. The Steelers play the Atlanta Falcons in week one of the NFL season. The team's quarterback, Kirk Cousins, is rehabbing from Achilles tendon surgery he had at the end of October with the Minnesota Vikings. Speaking with Jim Rome on Tuesday, Cousins admitted that he is not all the way back to where he was before the injury. I'm not fully cleared yet, not 100%, Cousins said. But to get reps, throwing the football makes a meaningful difference. I feel good. It helps that I'm a pocket-passing quarterback. If I was a receiver, running back, pass rusher, I think there'd be even more concern. As a quarterback, my game is based on my right arm. Accuracy. My mind. So, whether the Achilles is 100% today or not, I can still be very effective as a quarterback. Cousins is holding out hope that he can get to the top of the mountain by the time the Steelers visit on September 8. I'm looking forward to kind of closing the gap to get to 100% in the next couple of months, he said. We should still have a little bit of buffer time before the season starts. While many thought that the Steelers should have pondered Cousins as their quarterback for 2024 instead of Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, head coach Mike Tomlin insists that signing was never under consideration. We knew that Bengals star receiver T. Higgins was going to miss organized team activities this week in Cincinnati. He's still seeking a contract extension so that he doesn't have to sign the franchise tag placed on him by the club. But fellow pass catcher Jamar Chase did not show up for the start of the team's workouts on Tuesday either. He's also seeking a contract extension. Head coach Zach Taylor spent much of Tuesday downplaying their absences. Chase and Higgins are still working hard elsewhere. They'll be back at the right times, Taylor said via ESPN.com. We know what they're about and that they'll be ready and focused when it's time to come back. They have the information, so I know that they're staying on top of it. When they get here and are able to get those reps, I know that those two guys are vets, and they'll be in a real good spot. Chase and Higgins combined for 142 receptions for 1,872 yards and 12 touchdowns last season. Houston receiver Nico Collins may not have the career track record of those two, nor does he rise to the level name recognition of some of the other receivers we have heard as potential trade targets for the Steelers. Those players include the likes of Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers and Cortland Sutton from Denver.
Yet, Collins just inked a three-year extension worth up to $75 million, with $52 million guaranteed. Agent Drew Rosenhaus confirmed the terms to ESPN.com. Steelers likely to have interest in controversial three-time Pro Bowl WR. Not long ago, Saints star Michael Thomas was arguably the best receiver in the game, on his way to a guaranteed spot in the Hall of Fame. That was before a series of unfortunate events, injuries, a public battle with his coach and social media criticism of his quarterback, derailed things and left him here, still a free agent at the end of May, perhaps a little too toxic. For the majority. Teams to play but the Steelers aren't most teams, right? Steelers have always been willing to absorb talented players who have been discarded elsewhere. Thomas has talent and plays a position of need for the Steelers. Thomas could rebuild what's left of his career with the Steelers. He's 31 years old, so his days of leading the league in receptions, he did it twice and set the NFL record for receptions with 149 in 2019, and yards, he did it once, are behind him. But he's still a high-ceiling, low-risk bet at a position of need for Dallas. And at CBS Sports, in an article titled Ranking Players the Steelers Could Add Before Training Camp, these former pro bowlers would help Steelers in a big way, it is argued that Thomas should be one of those former pro bowlers. CBS analyst Garrett Podale notes that the Steelers have four roster spots available and writes, as Steelers has four roster spots remaining, here's a look at four players they might be interested in adding based on their needs and price potential, ahead of training camp. In connection with Tomas, three-time Pro Bowl wide receiver Michael Thomas, now 31, simply hasn't been the same since earning NFL Offensive Player of the Year honors in 2019 after setting the record for a single NFL season for receptions, with 149 to go along with a league-leading 1,725 receiving yards, as well as nine receiving touchdowns. Injuries robbed him of critical key years in the 2020s, as he played just 20 games over the past four seasons, totaling 1,000 to 57 yards and 95 receptions with four receiving touchdowns in 2020-23. If the Steelers believe he has a chance to stay healthy and want to bring in someone to push Jalen Tolbert into their third wide receiver spot, this signing could make sense. Tolbert is the favorite to take third place, but he has been shaky at best two seasons into his career. He was a third-round pick out of South Alabama in 2022 and recorded 24 receptions for 280 yards with two touchdowns in his two seasons. He posted a 56.5 grade on Pro Football Focus, which ranked 103rd out of 128 receivers in the NFL. Thomas surpassed that number for Tolbert. He totaled 448 yards in 10 games in 2023, with one touchdown catch, and was rated a career-low 67.4 by PFF. However, Thomas's status as a free agent is about more than his numbers. He struggled last year, even after the departure of former Saints coach and nemesis Sean Payton, with whom Thomas publicly feuded over the timing of his ankle surgery in 2020. His exit from New Orleans was ugly. The Saints gave him a record $97 million contract five years ago, and that deal helped make him an easy target. Several times in recent years, the team has hinted that he had not been honest about his injuries. He also had legal troubles last season, as he was, according to ESPN, arrested on misdemeanor charges of simple assault and criminal mischief in November when he got into an altercation with a contractor who was working in Thomas's neighborhood. It also didn't help that Thomas filed more than one social media complaint against New Saints quarterback Derek Carr. So, if the Cowboys were to bring him in, Thomas would bring with him considerable past baggage. But he would also bring a Pro Bowl past. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Michael Thomas? Leave your opinion in the comments.